A few days ago, we made ourselves a video talking about how Kent Hughes was the ultimate investor, crypto bro, finance guy, when it comes to buying low and selling high, that is exactly what he seems to be doing with Sean Monahan. Well, in this video, we're going over the opposite. You know, sometimes when you go out there into the penny stock world, you buy something when it's at like a dollar fifty, expecting it to rocket to three fifty, three seventy-five, four dollars even. You got pitched over to by a guy like Jordan Belfort, who just threw out some numbers saying I could get you ten thousand shares in at one fifty, out of two fifty, you get yourselves the profit. Maybe you end up falling for this and give it a week and all of a sudden the stock tanks down to three or four cents on the share and you ultimately are forced to cut your losses and sell in the red. Is this what we're dealing with here when it comes to the Vancouver Canucks and these two trade targets? Let's talk today about Brock Besser, the former right-wing American sniper who I'm not going to say is a sniper anymore because man oh man, when was the last time we saw legit Besser snipe? As well as the supposed to be starting goalie of the team, Thatcher Demko. Now, the reason these two are in the news is because of a few radio hits as well as a few articles that were published that I thought were interesting. Firstly, we're going over on to November 8th, so a week ago, on the fourthperiod.com. So David Pagnota's website, he wrote this article, Canucks are open for business and they're willing to make moves. This is what's written about when it comes to the Brock star himself. Dating back to last season, the Vancouver Canucks have made several players available for trade, including the likes of Tyler Myers, Connor Garland, and Tanner Pearson. They also have entertained calls on Brock Besser. The team, according to sources, would like to move OEL, but he owns a no-movement clause and has not been willing to waive it. Now that's another conversation for another day, but I only really wanted to focus on Brock specifically in this part of the video, because when it comes to the way Brock's been playing, this is the first of three seasons that he's going to be playing at $6.65 million a year. He's 25 years old, supposed to be in his prime, he's got like a five-game assist streak that he's got right now, which is nice, but at the same time, Brock Besser has zero goals on the year. He is on pace for zero goals in total, because zero multiplied by anything is zero even though he's actually got a really good sub-assist per game rate, I'd be hard-pressed to find any Canucks fan out there who's been satisfied with the way Brock has been playing this year. This is a guy that even though he does happen to get an assist once in a while, it really doesn't fulfill what a lot of Canucks fans need out of this guy in order for them to really put their faith in him and his productivity. Brock Besser, at his best, is supposed to be a guy that's going to get 30 goals in the season. This was supposed to be the year. We had all the hype in the world from Brock himself, from the coaching, from the staff. They all said, this is going to be it. 30 goal Brock. Let's go. And unfortunately, he has been... Very snake-bitten with his overall shooting ability. He doesn't even shoot the puck as much as he did when Bruce Boudreau initially took over. It's almost like the guy's really hesitating to score powerful, slapper, sniper-type goals. He'd been burying those left, right, and center in his rookie season. He had 29 goals in 62 games played. He should have had 30. There was one goal that I feel like he actually did score, but it wasn't actually credited to him. If you're a Canucks fan back from 2018, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It was in a game against Nashville, I believe. But either way, Brock has been disappointing this year. And it's not even just the lack of goal scoring that has been the case. Here's a post made by Jay Fresh on Twitter, graphing NHL players and their expected goals for number versus their expected goals against number. All the forwards are on here, and you can see that Elias Pettersson is technically the best Vancouver Canucks forward when it comes to two-way dominance. Andre Kuzmenko is the best Canucks forward when it comes to expected goals per 60. However, his goals against per 60, expected that is, is a bit less than guys like Mikheyev and Pettersson, which is why he is below the median. All the way at the very beginning of the chart is Brock Besser, who is at the absolute worst ranking of expected goals against per 60 minutes, as well as goals for. Only Niels Oman has a similar, if not maybe just slightly better, expected goals for rate than Besser, and Besser has the worst goals against number in the entire league. He literally has the worst numbers amongst all the forwards this year. And you think that's a guy worth $6.6 .6 million? 
I don't care if he gets 62 points in 76 games played. This guy does not produce. He's so slow. He can't win board battles. He doesn't make the best reads in his own zone. It's been frustrating for me. For a lot of fans, I'm always at, like, drop-in hockey events and everything. People talk to me because they know I'm Lego Rocks and also I kind of have a lot of friends. Yeah, believe it or not, the guy whose career revolves around him sitting in his bedroom talking into a microphone actually has friends in the real world. Who would have known? But it's always the same conversation brought up with these people. Hey, I think they should trade Brock. Yeah, no, Brock is not great. Brock is not the same Brock. Brock has been disappointing this season. The guy can't shoot. The guy can't score. The guy can barely make plays. Sure, he's getting a lot of assists, which is nice. But at the same time, Brock Besser is not the guy who is making things happen out there, if that makes sense. You can watch the games. You can see what I mean. Or you can only look at the assists and say, oh, what do you mean? The guy's on pace for 60-something points. That's too harsh, Lego. Either way, though, Brock, apparently fielding calls in this guy. If any NHL team is going to go out there and trade for him, I hope to goodness gracious they're only looking at the points and saying, oh, this guy's on pace for 60 points. We better strike while the iron is hot if he's available. Because, man, if he starts to decline in his play and that 6.6 .6 stays the way it is, that 6.6 .6 AAV, that is, then teams around are going to be like, oh, okay, well, that's the kind of player he is. Probably not try to trade for that guy then, I guess, eh? Either way, though, let's go to the other conversation I wanted to highlight here. Rick Dollywell said on Donnie and Dolly the other day, I did hear some teams are calling the Canucks on Thatcher Demko. This is the thing about goaltenders. They're allowed to have bad years. Every goaltender has a bad year or two. Not every goalie is going to be perfect, and it's rare to find goalies who are very consistently good every single year. You only really have the guys made out of greatness that achieve that kind of status. Thatcher Demko is 26 years old, and he's coming off a year where he actually was really good. A 915 save percentage and a 272 goals against in 64 games played. While those numbers might not be the best, the fact is the Vancouver Canucks sucked so hard defensively in 21-22 that Demko was forced to carry the team when he could. He probably had back problems with the amount of carrying he had to do of this hockey team. And so, even though Demko has gone out there with one of the worst expected goals against numbers in the entire NHL this year, this is a guy that unfortunately has just regressed in the worst year possible to be able to regress. And I say that because the Canucks defense has not gotten any better, it's still as bad as it was last year. It's just Thatcher Demko is not capable of playing like superhuman bubble Demko anymore, and that's okay. Superhuman Bubble Demko is 980, 970 and above Demko that should not be treated as the norm because this is just a regular human being. Demko being what he is today is just an average goalie in front, or excuse me, behind of a very bad defense. And because he's not Bubble Demko, he's prone to letting in a few more stinkers here and there. But the team in front of him is not helping him out. It's kind of this weird, like, psychological rotation. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's a domino effect of one thing affecting the other. The Canucks being bad on defense makes Demko face more nastier shots. When Demko faces these nastier opportunities, he lets them in more than he did before, which leads to a cycle of the Canucks defense also being a little bit lazy. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy here. And if any team is going to go out there and think about trading for Thatcher Demko, you have to acknowledge that. 100%. I do think that there still is an elite franchise caliber goalie that is laying dormant within Demko and his frame right now. It's just the guy's allowed to go through a slump. All goalies are. And now it's just the worst possible time because there's like, yeah, there's no other real redeeming quality of this Canucks team in this season's worth of play when it comes to projecting them to be successful. Of course, if you're looking at individual points, oh, Pedersen's getting points, Bo's getting goals, that's fine. But when it comes to actual tangible results? I mean, sure, they won against Buffalo, they won against Ottawa, but they're not winning these games convincingly. They're getting really close, and they're blowing leads along the way. So, if any team is going to go out there and try to trade for Thatcher Demko, I honestly would be a bit more hesitant to trade him. However, if you really wanted to say, okay, screw it, focus on the future, get what we can for the future, trade Demko away if we get a first and a second and another prospect or something, then okay, you could twist my arm and I could say yes to that kind of deal. But for Thatcher, I ultimately do feel like there should be a bit more belief in him. It's just with the way the team is and how badly they've been performing, 
You could trade away everybody, pretty much, except for Elias Pettersson and Quinn Hughes and get away with it. So, talk to the comments your thoughts about these two trade candidates. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishra Shrolls 99. And, bye. <laughs>